The greatest power you possess is your ability to choose. Join Lowe's more as he reveals how you can begin to maximize that power by exploring yourself on the deepest levels and committing to making lasting and positive changes. Get ready to achieve breakthroughs that will lead to accelerated growth and transformation because you are now tuned in to The Blueprint. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, again, uh, this is Lowe's Moore and welcome back to The Blueprint. Let me say up front, man, that I want to say thank you for all your support, uh, you know, over this last year. This has been awesome. Um, man, hey, today was awesome because uh, my godson, and I'll talk about him a little bit later, man. And so it's been a long day. Uh, graduations, uh, in the hot sun, uh, you know, little brunches. I mean, but it's all good. It's, it's good when it's all good. And, and so uh, I want to say Thank you and welcome you back to the Blueprint with Lowe's Moore. And uh, man, this this uh, this show tonight is is, is going to be good. Um, it's going to be awesome, and I'm really looking forward to it. So I want to just jump right into it. And as as each week, here here's my little ball right here. I want to drop my pebble, my pebble in the pond. We expect in the ripple effect of this show. We 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 expect that individuals are going to be impacted by uh, what happens on the show, the words that are said on the show, and uh, it's just going to be awesome. And and so uh, sit back, relax, and let's let, let's get rolling here. Um, let me start off with, first of all with the uh, book of the week. Right, uh, we got the book of the week, and man. You know, uh, Tim S. Glover on Relentless, right? Uh, the good to great and unstoppable, right? And it speaks of, uh, this is the individual who uh, had the opportunity, who met Michael Jordan, who trained Michael Jordan and many other individuals. But, uh, you know, this book talks about being relentless. And, and, and this, man, this, this, this book is awesome. Um, if you if you're looking for a really good book to talk about the importance of being competitive and and relentless and 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 the pursuit of excellence, this is a very good book to get. And, um, you know, so now got a word of the week. I'm going to add to that book, the word of the week, competitive. Uh, you, you know, one of the things that when you look around and see whether or not people uh, can be good or will be good, uh, you can find somebody who has, man, really less talent than anybody else. But if they're competitive and as the book just stated, relentless, right, uh, they will find their way to the top. I mean, you know, I think one of my gifts, you know, as an athlete and in life Right. And sometimes it's very hard to control uh, a little bit too competitive. Uh, I, I love the wit. I love to win. And and I am relentless when it comes to winning. Uh, let me tell you a quick story. Uh, back a few years ago, we honored Denzel Washington at the uh, Waldorf Astoria. And there were so many uh, people, you know, that was so competitive Right. And so relentless. Let me let me just name a just name a, a, a few. Uh, 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 Joe Frazier was there, man. You talk about a guy that was relentless and competitive. Muhammad Ali was there. Man. And, you know, uh, of course, Denzel Washington, who's competitive and relentless. But Michael Jordan was there. And, uh, you know, right after we have had an after party right after the uh, the gala. And Michael Jordan and myself, we were we were up there upstairs having a conversation. And the actor Leon uh, said to Michael Jordan, "Hey, Lowe's is like David Thompson." And so Michael Jordan said, "Oh, that's the guy. You know, that he was my idol growing up. Played with North Carolina State, Denver Nuggets. Just and 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 so Leon says to Michael, "Well, Lowe's could get you. You know, which means that Lowe's could beat you." 
And so Michael's face changed and he said, he said to, um, you know, to me, what, you know, um, well, you know, we were in tuxedos. So we're going back and forth at each other about who could beat who. And we had forgot we were at a gala or at this after party. And he started talking about, well, I said, well, look, I got a gym. Right. And we can go over there. I run the Boys and Girls Club. We can go over there now and and we can get down. And, and, and he was like, yeah, we can do that. And then all of a sudden he said, no, nah, no, nah, I got a lot to lose. And of course, I was heated. He was heated. And I'll say, yeah, you do have a lot to lose. And and then uh, so so my wife kind of got me away and we went on our, our separate ways. And then he Michael's talking to my wife and he said, oh, your husband's a good man, isn't he? And my wife said, yes. And then Michael, this is how competitive he is. He said, well, I'm a better one. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to being relentless and competitive, right, you got to have that competitive edge. And so uh, here's Pier uh, 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 Hill Harper and Pierce Harper's affirmation of the week. Yeah, this is my affirmation. I like this affirmation. You know, an affirmation is what you say uh, to yourself. I'm looking for it right now. Oh, well, we are looking for it right now. Is that we're looking for an affirmation. I don't know if we can find it, but it says my ability to conquer challenges is limitless. My potential to succeed is infinite. Right. I don't know if we can find that up there so everybody can see it. Uh, we're looking for Hill and Pierce Harper's affirmation moment. Right. My ability to conquer challenges is limitless. My potential to succeed is infinite. Right. That means that there is no end. Right. To my relentlessness and my competitiveness. That, that's just awesome, man. I like that. And uh, I think we're still looking for it. Uh, if you see it, pop it on. And and then, you know, I started in this new season, I started the music of the week and the movie of the week. And as you can see, any, I don't know if you guys remember this, but Curtis Blow, you know, remember that song, we're playing basketball. We're playing basketball. Look that one up on YouTube. Yeah, back in the day when I was playing basketball, that was some of our warm-up music uh, with Curtis Blow. I'm playing basketball. And then, man, this is one of the great basketball movies, uh, Blue Chip with Nick Nolte and Shaquille O'Neal. Remember Penny Hardaway was there? I think Penny Hardaway is being interviewed for the Orlando Magic right now. He's coaching at Memphis University of Memphis and, you know, just the awesome, awesome, awesome movie. I, it, it was on the other night. That's what made me uh, think of it. But that is our music of the week and our movie of the week. And don't forget, we're going we're gonna to have a question, a curiosity question during, during the show. Uh, look out for that curiosity question. Yeah, that's going to be awesome. Yeah, look out for that. And then coming next, next week on a new, it's not a new, the show is not changing, but we're just going for next week. The show will be, the blueprint will be on July the 3rd, July the 3rd, um, from 7 to 8.30, a Saturday next week, not 4th of July, but July the 3rd. Uh, we're going to have a Saturday night show, and my guest is going to be none other than Steve Vaccaro. Steve Vaccaro is going to be there and I, I will be doing the show from North Carolina, from Fayetteville, North Carolina, man, it's going to be at the family cookout and we're going to be hanging out there, man, having a good old time. And it, it's going to be awesome next week. And then following him on June the 11th, right on June the 11th, we're going to have uh, Milton van uh, Milton van, uh, you know, he's gifted, uh, the gifted one, man, a preacher and a singer as well. And I don't know if we have some shout outs. We got some shout outs on there. Did you see any uh, any shout outs on there? Yeah, I think I had a couple of shout outs. I'm going to give a shout out to my godson, uh, Jamal. 
Um, Jamal Johnson, he graduated today from nursing school. Man, he's man, he's on another level now. Uh, we just finished celebrating with him. It was just awesome to be at the graduation. It was hot. I mean, I mean, literally it was hot, but it was a good graduation. It's great to see young people do well. Congratulations, Jamal, man. I love you. And that was awesome. Also, I have a shout out, Rye Benjamin, right? Uh, remember that name, Rye Benjamin. He graduated from Mount Vernon High School. I uh, started out with a scholar, full scholarship to UCLA, transferred to USC, and then joined the Nike track team. And uh, he made the Olympics. You know, that's Rob Benjamin. He's going to be on the running the the four by the four hundred um, at the Olympics in Japan. Uh, Rye, good luck. You had the second fastest time in the world this year, man, and that's awesome, man. And and so. Uh, you know, that's my intro introduction. And now I want to show you a highlight of tonight's uh, guest. You know, Bob Huggins at his alma mater earlier this year, picked up his 800th career win. Bob Huggins, who you think eventually will be a Hall of Famer, 826 wins. 870 wins. He is one of the best. And Bob Huggins, career win number 899. One of America's elite coaches. There was a, a hoop across the street from us, and uh, every day we went over and he would shoot, and I was his rebounder. And I knew he was going to be a successful coach because if he had his target right here, and I threw it, now, now remember, I'm second, third grader, and, and I hit him right here, he was all over me. He'd throw the ball back hard at me. You know, you, that's all when you, I got the target here, you hit the target, and, and so on and so forth. So I, yeah, he's going to be able to tell people how to play if, if, if need be. We have lived it since we were born, basically, because Dad always coached, and so we went to all the games, and and I rebounded a lot for Bobby. He would say, come on, Lynn, let's go go up to the gym. You could rebound for me for a while. I was like, oh, good. Okay, we will. There wasn't much else that we did. I mean, honestly, that, that my dad told us that if you don't, if, if you don't play basketball, you're going to work, and none of us really liked to work, so we played constantly. That's, that's all we've ever done. I mean, basketball has been our life from birth. When I was growing up, that was my hero. I mean, he was the guy I looked up to. He was the guy who went on to college. He was mom's favorite, which really, I don't know why, but he was. There were seven of us, so each one of us thought we were mom's favorite. I personally think I still am, but mom always wanted him to come back to West Virginia. I remember when he was at Cincinnati the first time and he thought about coming back and she was so excited. She, she said, we got to get our golden blue, we've got to buy our clothes. Unfortunately, she passed away before he came back here, but she would be so proud of him. That's always been his dream. I always knew we would end up back here sometime. We started here, first year we were married for a year and then came back. 40, 30 some years later. He loves Morgantown, he loves West Virginia. It would um, mean a lot to our, our dad's dad, our grandfather. He was very close to him. He's always loved West Virginia and I remember he used to sit on Pappy's lap and listen to the games and stuff and he's always loved West Virginia. It means everything to him, you know. When, we have so many stories, you know, growing up out in, in Doug Hill, you know, is where the, the, the house was. And uh, and he was here more than the rest of us. You know, we Dad had since moved to Ohio, and so most of us kind of grew up, but Bobby spent his, his those formative years right here in, in Morgantown. You know, he, he just, he loves the game so much, and so he doesn't do it for accolades. You know, when, when you talk to him, he's not talking about this or that. You talk to him about, you know, the, the, being in the Basketball Hall of Fame. And if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, it's not why he did it. He, he did it because of the love of the game and the love of teaching the game. That, that's his motivation. I don't know if the wins mean anything. I mean, I, they do. But quite honestly, I think it's probably the relationships he develops with his players. They just have a, a great respect for each other. And I think that if you talk to most of his players, they're all going to pretty much say the same thing. He's hard. 
that he's doing it for, for you. And when it's all said and done, there's just a lot of respect between the two of them. Those are like his sons. And he loves those guys like they're his sons. And so everyone thinks that he's this like loud guy, but he's so quiet at home and he's so loving and with the dogs and with people and just he's completely different than he is on the court. Congratulations, Bobby. We're proud of you, we love you, and we knew you could do it. I knew he was always gonna get here and I'm proud of you and congratulations. I'm so proud of him. I know more than anyone how hard that he has worked for this and how dedicated he is to this and I mean it's it was completely normal for me not to see him for a month growing up during July recruiting period. He's I mean really sacrificed a lot with his family and, and doing everything to get to the point that he is so I'm just really proud of him. Congratulations Bobby we're all proud of you. Mom would be super proud of you. Dad's proud of you too and we love you. Always have and always will. It's amazing. You really, really worked hard to get to keep on doing what you have been doing. Bob, I want you to know how much this would mean to Mom. And how much it means to us just to watch you grow and to be what you wanted to be. A very good coach. And congratulations and we love you. That's awesome. That's my good friend, my teammate, my brother, Bobby Huggins. Welcome to the show. Thank you, Lois. Man, that was awesome, man. I, I, I was watching that the other day, man. It was almost a tearjerker, man. I, I was like, <laughs> nah, it's hard for me to, it's hard for me not to have tears whenever, you know, it's family, you know. Yeah. The one yeah. thing I want to tell you, though, Lowe's, is it's a good thing you didn't go over that gym with Michael. <laughs> oh, man. If you were hey. looking for a humbling experience, that might have been it. But uh, Yeah, it might, it might have been it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I always say about Michael, right, as I watched him over the years and why – People always ask me who I think the greatest of all time was and why I think Michael is the greatest of all time. Um, because in all the time that I've watched Michael, I've never seen a guy play with that kind of intensity and energy for every second, minute, quarter, game, overtime with the same intensity and same energy and, and passion. Every game, I, I, I don't know one game that I watched Michael that he didn't take any seconds off. And that's for me, and I'm I'm competitive. And, you know, I like to think I play with a intensity, but not to the level or degree that he did. So, yeah. But we, we would have had a little going on there. It would have been a little pushing and shoving and stuff like that. <laughs> I, I saw him play one-on-one -on -one with Michael Jackson. Um, that was a that was a mismatch. Yeah, of course it was. <laughs> hey, before we get rolling, I want to pop on somebody uh, to say hello to you. Uh, she was a little nervous. We finally got her on, but we want to bring her on there. Yeah, my mom wants to say hello. How you doing? Hi, Bobby. How you doing? You know what? Lowe's, Lowe's didn't even send me a cake or anything for doing this. And I know you have one ready. I know you have one ready for me. <laughs> she said that the other day. She said, oh, I'm going to have to now make him a cake or a pie. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So. Well, you're looking good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you sure you. are. Yeah. Yeah. The, the last time we was in um, down in the city. Did you share? Absolutely. 
Okay. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh man. It's kinda of like it's kinda of like I didn't really want to, but I had to pass the ball to Lowe's once in a while. <laughs> Same way with the cake, you know. I didn't really want to pass any, but I did. Yeah. Okay. Well, I appreciate the pass. <laughs> <laughs> So looking forward to the team next, again. We're going to have a chance. I think we uh, we're going. We've lost some guys. We you know we lost some guys to graduation. I think we're probably going to lose one to the NBA. But um, we're. I think we're pretty good. You gonna wow. be okay. You stay on them like you've been staying them with that finger. You'll be all right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do the best I can. Right. So right. so mom. I want to say thank you for coming on. You finally figured it out. We we were last minute trying to figure it out. You jumped on. Well, you look sister, great. My sister Joyce, thank God to her. Yes. Well, on. we we thank on Joyce. All right. All right. <laughs> All right. Bobby, Bob. Love you too. Yeah, that was, that's awesome. She, he was trying to get on. I said, "You want to come on?" She's like, "No, I don't know how to get on." <laughs> She she figured it out and she she jumped on. She wanted to say hello to you. She was on. I think her and I were on the same plan. I I was struggling as well. Oh man, I thought this would be easy for you. No, no, I got I got Ryan standing over here. He's our he's our, <laughs> our video guy, and he uh, he does all that stuff. I don't. And I so don't. you you just get on. I just I just yeah I just get on and try not to screw up. Yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so, Bobby, talk to me a little bit about, well, you know, video kind of says it all. But, you know, hearing it from your mouth, man, there are three things that, you know, I try to focus on, especially in the midst of this pandemic, um, is when I started right in the midst of the pandemic, man, just to try to get people some hope and encouragement. And a lot of the people that I interview had wonderful and powerful stories. And, you know, nobody starts off from. You know, everybody thinks everybody just gets a silver spoon and we just start off and we become successful. But there's always a process. Right. And there's always ups and downs and tests and trials. So talk to me a little bit about is three uh, questions I like to focus on. Number one is the importance of family, the importance of education and the importance of faith. Well, I, I didn't have a choice in, in any of those, to be honest with you. Um, the, the video had my brothers and sisters on there. And, and as you can see, I had two brothers and four sisters, or, or as my dad once said, they asked him uh, about the team and all that. And then they said, how many children do you have? And he said, two boys and four others. So, so y'all got to listen to the four others as well. Right. But, um, yeah. Lowe's, we lived in a trailer. We had seven kids in a trailer, seven kids in a trailer. Boys slept in one bedroom, girls slept in the other bedroom. My mom and dad had a bedroom to themselves. And as my sisters used to say all the time, you don't want to be the seventh kid in the tub. <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, wow. You know, so, uh, you know, and we never thought we were, we never really thought we were poor. We were, but we didn't really think about it because virtually everybody around us was poor. So, you know, you, uh, you just you're just happy to, to to wake up every day, and as, as long as I had that ball and that, that that ball kept bouncing, and and I had a place to to shoot it, I was happy. It, I was uh, loved basketball, uh, loved loved everything about it, and, and uh, had the good fortune of being able to. I screwed up. I went to Ohio University for a year and then transferred back to West Virginia. Uh, the guy that I went to play for retired is the reason that I that I. I really left because I loved that guy. He was one of the great guys and one of the great people that I've ever been around. A guy named Jim Snyder, a uh, great coach at Ohio University. So then I transferred back to West Virginia and, and back home where I could I could go up the holla, you know, and, and sit with my grandfather, who uh, really was the, the male influence in my life. Uh, wow. A great man, a uh, great Christian man. Uh, built a church, Lowe's. If you remember going out to Saberton and that first Baptist church up on the hill. Oh, yeah. My grandfather built that. Wow. So, uh, yeah, just uh, love being around him and, and, and listening to him. And 
tell you a funny story, Lo. So I I went out when I, I was a little kid. I said, Pappy, can you can you put up a hoop for me? And he said, <laughs> he said, yeah, where you want it? And and I, our like it really wasn't a driveway. It was ashes and stuff. But it was and it went downhill from 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 the garage down to the road. And so Pappy put the back the uh, rim on upside down. And I'm like, uh, Pappy, uh, I think you put it on upside down. He said, well, it'll go in easier this way, Bobby. <laughs> and, and, you know, then you had to, you know, you couldn't shoot from up above because I was out there by myself m the majority of the time. You had to shoot down from down the hill. So the ball bounced back to you. If you was up the hill, you had to chase it into the creek. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I, I'm saying like, yeah, that, what we do for basketball. What, I mean, were you interested in any other sports? I played baseball. I okay. probably was probably the only ninth grader to start on the Little League team in, in Morgantown history, probably. We won the uh, city championship and all that. And then my dad decided it was time to move. And so we moved to Ohio. But, uh, yeah, I played I played football. Played football till the guy hit me after the whistle, and I had a, a severe concussion. And my dad, what really concerned my dad was I missed the first two weeks of practice, and he was the coach. <laughs> okay. It wasn't so much a concussion; it was that I missed a practice. <laughs> so that 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 pretty much ended my football career. But wow. yeah, I, I loved other sports. Ran track, did the whole thing. Yeah, no, uh, nobody's doing that anymore. Nobody's nobody's doing baseball, football, basketball, and running track no more. No. <laughs> and, and you know we have all the technology, all the performance, all the coaches, you know, to be able all the nutrition to take care of our bodies. But mm -mm, uh, they're really doing that. So, um, well, you know what, Lowe's? Here's here's and this is. Uh, <clears throat> And, and I tell I tell our guys this, and I and I I, I, I talk about this quite a bit, probably uh, right or wrong. But you know, when we played, when we grew up, you had to go to the playground to play. You didn't you didn't go in a gym. There wasn't anybody in there, you know, choosing up sides or 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 you didn't have a you you didn't have all that. You went to the playground, and so I think you had to learn to play right at the playground. Because if you didn't, they wouldn't pick you. Wow. Particularly when you're a young guy, you know, and you're trying. I learned, I learned real quick going to the playground. I, I knew who the best player on the playground was, and I threw him the ball every time I touched it. Because I knew he had he was he would pick me. And he, he he'd pick me and I'd play on a team that probably because of him didn't lose as much and I didn't have to sit over there and watch, you know, while <laughs> the other people were getting, getting their deal. And I, I remember going to going to Akron and playing with, with Gus Johnson and Nate Thurman and, and uh, Dick Snyder and, and, and all the Cleveland Cavaliers, Austin Carr. Wow. And, and the one hoop was 11 feet and the other one was about nine and a half. And for some reason, the Cavs always got the nine and a half foot hoop. <laughs> but it was, a, it was at Talmadge Junior High School. And, 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 and I mean, everybody, everybody in the whole area, Akron, Canton, Guys down from Cleveland and, and on Sunday nights, man, that was that was where you went and played. So, so I'm blessed, man. I, I I've I've been I've been fortunate enough to be around great people and 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 great players really my whole life. And so, you know, I'm I'm fortunate. I I I, uh, I thank God, you know, every day for giving me the opportunity that he's he's given me and letting me have the opportunities that I had growing up. So, so let me get this straight. So, you you pass the ball to the guy who could help you win the game. But when I came in the game, um, you dribbled it too much, man. You dribbled it. Too much. <laughs> you know, I I threw it to the, the guy. Actually, if he got double teamed, he threw it back to me. You just trying to prove you could dribble between two guys. You know. So. <laughs> Oh, uh, also, so it was my dribbling that I couldn't get a shot. No, it was the length of your dribble. I didn't care if you dribbled, but you know. <laughs> oh man, you're too funny. 
So uh, I remember uh, what what was your thoughts uh, when uh, when I got signed to West Virginia? What, what was your thoughts when I came as came as I, a player? I, we were all excited. We were all excited. I mean, Coach Amy uh, told us everything about you, and uh, we were we were excited, Lowe's. We wanted to win. You know, we we had been very average, and and to get you know, more and better guys in was, was exciting to us. I mean, I don't think, and, 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 you know, we, we played with great guys. Tony Robertson could really play. I mean, oh, he, yeah. he could really play. And, and, you know, Tony probably should have been a 10, 10 year pro. I mean, he was, he had the size, he had the athleticism. He, he sure had the jump shot. And we played with him for maybe two of the better big guys to ever play at, at this university and, and Warren Baker and Maurice Robinson. So, you know, we were blessed and, and we thought we had a chance to, to do something special. And, and the year before you got there is when Georgetown threw in a three quarter court shot. To mm. Yeah. Yeah. John Thompson told me one time I was, you know, we were up in uh, Georgetown. He said, I got a picture of you on my wall. I said, no, you don't. <laughs> he said, he said, Bobby, I'm telling you, I got a picture of you on my wall. And I said, Coach, I'm not believing it. He said, Well, next time you're up there, I'll show you. So I was up there for an AAU event. He took me in the in the office, and sure enough, there's a picture of me on the wall. I'm catching the ball as it's coming through the net to beat us by one, which would have put us in the NCAA tournament instead of put Georgetown in the NCAA tournament. He said, See there, I didn't tell you what kind of picture it was. I didn't know <laughs> the picture you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so tell me, uh, in in your uh, well what three years at, at west virginia right yeah i was there four because i i redshirted a year okay so, so yeah, in, played three. yeah in in um in those four years you know t- you know talk to me about some of the special moments that you had as a player it was special to me every time i got on the floor you, you know Lose, it, it's i've i had kind of a roller coaster deal you know, going to Ohio U and then transferring, and then and then we weren't very good. And I'm the red shirt guy, so you know you play a lot freer when you're you're the red shirt guy. You're not <laughs> you don't have to get in the game. So I'm making shots and probably taking shots I shouldn't take and still making them. And so the coaching staff was excited. Then you know, as my luck would have it, then they got fired. Yeah, so, uh, they got fired, and and. Uh, Coach Gardner came in with with Coach Amick and Coach Retchai, and and uh, it was a different, a totally different style. It was Coach Moran told me when they shoot it, you run the other end. We're going to throw it ahead to you. Just shoot it. And I thought, <laughs> they don't get any better than that, Lowe's. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> don't get any better than that. And then I go from that to you know being uh, being Coach Gardner's system, which was a little slower. Well, a lot slower, and and. Uh, and we and we had we had really good players. We just we didn't didn't do a great job of using them. And we played a when you look go back and look, we played a really good schedule. Hmm. We, we played a lot of really quality teams. So yeah, and back then you I don't think you you guys were independent. We were we were we were independent. We're, and then they went in the what was it called the Eastern Eight? Eastern Eight, yes. Then it was the Eastern Eight, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we played all up and down the East Coast. It really was kind of the the the, the forerunner of the Big East. Really, is is kind of what it ended up being because we got to play in the Garden every year. You know, really yeah. exciting and played in Boston Garden, and you know, so that part of it was really a lot of fun. Yeah, I, I remember uh, seeing you guys at the Garden in my uh, senior year. Uh, you guys came up and practiced at the high school, and I got a chance to go see you guys at the uh, at the garden. Played and, Rutgers, who was undefeated for that year. Yeah, right, until yeah. the Final Four. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. They had Phil uh, Phil Sellers, Mike and, Dabney, Mike Dabney, Eddie uh, Jordan, Eddie Jordan, Hollis Copeland. Yeah, yeah they, they James had, Bailey. Ja- oh, don't, 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 please don't mention James Bailey. <laughs> They block some shots now. Ooh, man, and we'll dunk on you. Uh, I mean, the alley oop from the James Bailey, Jam and James. Yep. <laughs> I hate hearing that name. 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and uh, so, so tell me, um, because I didn't really see it. I just heard it. Uh, we were playing in, I think, uh, what's the place Duquesne played in? Uh, Civic Center. Civic Center. Yeah, I remember. I just remember, you know, looking the other way and then turning back and there was B.B. Flannery um, laid out on the floor. I that mean, wasn't I mean, in the Civic Center, though. That wasn't in the that, Civic Center? That was in the Coliseum. In the Coliseum? Uh-huh. Yeah. And you know that Coliseum floor is hard. I, I hit it quite a few times. I'm, I'm very aware. <laughs> yeah. all, all I remember is waiting for the ball to come in, and I heard Coach say something, and and I turned to look to see what he was saying, and then I thought I thought you threw me the ball, and I heard because I heard something hit the floor, and I turned around and there was uh, BB Flannery, uh, too proud to speak. I mean, it was just it was just. <laughs> I was like, oh, <laughs> well, that's I don't I don't think I was going to throw you the ball. Actually, I was, I was, <laughs> you was out of bounds, man. You had to throw me the ball. <laughs> <laughs> you at least had to get a pass out of bounds from out of bounds. Yeah. Begrudgingly, <laughs> begrudgingly we, I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> I love you, man. I love you no matter what. Hey, man, I tell you, you know, Flows. I, I think you know coming back here as as the coach and and getting to see everybody again, and then when we have the former players back, I'm telling you, it's a it's a it's a great deal. And I mean, I'm 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 blessed here that you know Bake lives right up the road. Maurice lives maybe five minutes from me, and Junius preaches every morning. You know, so <laughs> uh, the, the three big guys that we had during my time here are all right here in town and all doing extremely well. And, and, uh, two of the three asking for tickets every game, you know? <laughs> yeah, I know they are. And, uh, so that, that's a good thing, man. You, you just mentioned coming back to Morgantown and having the opportunity to coach. So, uh, talk to me a little bit about the transition from a player into a coach. I mean, I already, I, you know, I knew you loved to play, but the passion for coaching, I mean, uh, did it happen right away? Uh, and, and yeah, talk a little bit about coaching, man, because you, you've been awesome, man, uh, over these years from – you started out where? Um, and started out here. Um, you know, my dad was a coach, so I was, I was always around coaches. I was always – you know, my dad would go uh, see the great high school coaches in the really in a in a in the tri-state area, and had to have somebody ride with him. So I was I was uh, always drafted to ride with them. <laughs> I, and uh, but you, you know, Lowe's, well, I was I, honestly I thought about going to law school, and then I, I got a uh, I got a tryout with the Seventy Sixers. And stayed a lot longer than probably I deserved to stay. And by the time uh, they cut me, unceremoniously, I might add, um, by the time I got cut, I got cut with the number one pick and the number two pick in me. We, all three of us got whacked at the same time. But um, I, I came back here and I had no idea what to do or what I was going to do. And, and I had just gotten married, actually. June and I had just gotten married and, and – uh, Coach Gardner said, why don't you be a GA for me? And I said, that's great. I'll do that. So I was like the gopher for a while. And then one of our guys wasn't doing what he was supposed to do. And Coach said, I want you to go do this. So I ended up as as a GA. I was doing a lot of recruiting. I was doing a majority of the scouting. Uh, I mean, they, they really gave me the leeway to do a lot of things. So, you know, it, it, that was great for me. And then Coach Gardner got fired and Coach Catlett came in and uh, it was time for me to leave. And so I was fortunate to go to Ohio State for two years and did the same thing, did all the scouting, did a lot of recruiting uh, and was around great players. Herb Williams was there. Kelvin Ramsey was there. Uh, Granville Waiters we recruited. And my, then my brother went to school there. My, my youngest brother went to school there. 
So, you know, I mean, it was that that was great for me for two years. And I, I wanted to be a head coach. So I went to Walsh and took a humongous pay cut. That's when I found out that the, that the, the, uh, Brotherhood of Christian Instruction, they were cheaper than the priest. <laughs> I, I could have got more money from the priest than I got from the Brotherhood of Christian Instruction. But, <laughs> but I was there, and I knew I had to be really good, or I, I wouldn't be able to move, you know, and I, I wanted to keep moving up. And and so I, we went from having the worst team that anyone's ever seen to the best team that they've ever had there or ever probably will have. We're 34-1. and one. And lost in the lost in the national championship. So, um, yeah, man, I you know I've been blessed. I've been I've been blessed, and things just kind of fell my way. And I I was in I, I went from there to Central Florida as an assistant at Central Florida, and was really really frustrated. And uh, I go home one night, and my wife said, "There's a guy on the phone wants to talk to you." So I get it. He and and he all he said was, "Are you ready to come home?" Uh, and I said, who is this? He said, that's not the question I ask you. I ask you, are you ready to come home? I said, yes, sir. I didn't wear, wear I mean, my home was, you know, <laughs> so I, I said, yes, sir. And he said, okay. He said, I'll get back with you. And I, that was it. And it was the president at the university of Akron, Dominic Gazetta. Mm. And then he called me a little later and he said, listen, I'm making this choice. Don't worry about what anybody says or what you read. You're my guy you're going to be my coach at, and because he had seen me coach at Walsh was wow. down the road in Canton, Ohio. So, uh, yeah, man, I, I've been blessed. So you, uh, you mentioned June, right. And, mm -hmm. uh, and remember I was before the wedding. Now, I don't know why I always think about this all the time. Why would we go swimming before your wedding? That's it. That because it was so hot outside and we were playing <laughs> ball. The question is, why did Junius jump in when he couldn't swim? That's the <laughs> yeah, that's hey, true. Loves, hey, loves, listen to this. This is great. So I'm in church one day, right? And his sermon is, is centered around uh, me knocking him out so I could drag him in from drowning. Because if you remember, he had Dana Perno underwater. I mean, Dana was about to drown. And they tell you in life saving, if you can't, you know, if, if the, they're going to wrestle with you and fight with you and, they, and somebody's going to die, I mean, you've you got to punch them. So you pop up and you punch him. And I hit him. I hit him in the jaw as hard as I could hit him. And thank God I knocked him out and then and then kind of drug both of them in there. And, and that was that was his sermon. <laughs> And I'm sitting there thinking, dude, you got to have something better than this. <laughs> hey, first of all, I couldn't rem I, I didn't know why we were playing basketball on the day of your wedding. I didn't know why we went swimming in a lake. Yep. Right. And and uh, and I remember when Junior said when we were swinging off that rope and diving in the lake. And, you know, swimming around and Junius said, how deep is this? And we said it's about seven. Somebody said it's about seven feet. He said, like, I'm six eleven, so I can just touch the bottom and just pop up. Well, and who I, do you think said it? I remember who said it. Tommy Roberts. <laughs> yeah, he listened to Tommy, man. We got some <laughs> land for Junius. <laughs> and, and then I was like, I was in the water and I remember seeing Junius grab the rope. And I remember getting out the water. I said, look, Junius is not going to kill me when he comes up out that water. I seen a, I seen a little, a little eight year old kid almost choke a lifeguard who knew what he was doing, man. And when, when Junius hit that water and I seen him come out slamming that water, like a, you know, he's slamming it like a octopus. <laughs> And, and then I seen Dana, Dana trying to help him. Dana was going to try to save him. Yeah. And then I seen him choking Dana. And he started turning red. And then I seen you jump in. And he's trying to grab you. He said, oh, no, this is not going to happen. And then that, <laughs> then that pop came. Pop. I was a lifeguard. I was, yeah. I was a lifeguard there for I don't know how long, but I was a lifeguard. There. I had all that <laughs> lifeguard training. Wow, <laughs> it was it wasn't funny at the time. It's just funny now, 
<laughs> you know, but uh, I don't know why Junius would pick that as a sermon. I, I think I think Pern still has dreams about it. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> oh man, uh, let's see if we have uh, we're going to pop somebody on real quick. Let's see if we have any guys back there to pop on to say hello to you. Um, nobody? Oh, nobody's there, so we're going to keep talking, man. So, so, um, man, I, I really enjoyed uh, watching you coach over the years um, from uh, Cincinnati. You had some great, great players at Cincinnati. And um and then great players at, at, at West at West Virginia, right? And you've been very, very close, right? What's the difference between when we were playing and today's players? I think the speed of the game. When you when you think back, Lowe's of when we played, there was no clock. You know that you didn't have to worry about you didn't have to worry about the clock you didn't have to there was no three-point line the game was a lot slower i mean it, it, it's hard to admit that you know that it was it was a lot slower when we played but it was a lot slower scores were a lot lower you know you because of the clock you have to shoot it faster because of the three-point line you score more points um I think I think that's the that's the biggest difference, and and quite honestly, probably put more athletes on the floor than we did back then. You know, there were we 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 had guys that knew how to play basketball but weren't very athletic. Right and now, it's become if you're not athletic, it's really hard to play. Yeah, I th I think I was uh, you know kind of one of those fir first wa wave of of the athletes coming into. And uh, I think you know Joe was pretty. Um, um, Joe was pretty athletic too, and Joe was very athletic, and 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 so was uh, Dennis Hosey. Yeah, yeah, but I mean, so was Maurice. You know, so was Tony. You know, yeah, they were. I mean, but then we, you know, we had other. You weren't there when when Stan was there. Stan wasn't very athletic, but he knew how to play and could score. I think that the year before my my red shirt year, the year I set out, we were really, really non-athletic. You take Bake out of the equation, we were very non-athletic. But that's I think that's I think that's a large part of it is 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 the rule changes I think have have changed the game, and certainly the athleticism has changed the game. I, I went to the 76ers and and there was I, I thought there was a hundred guys there to start with you know and wasn't but there was a bunch and slowly guys get cut guys get cut guys get cut and and I'm thinking every time I'm gonna get cut and I and I I didn't get cut and um, then then I I stayed which I never thought I would stay until the real the real guys came in <laughs> and like I said, it was it was the first pick, the second pick, and me. And now I'm out there with Doug Collins. I'm out there with World Be Free. I'm out there with Henry. You know, I, I'm out there with Dr. J. You know, and and all of a sudden, man, you're like, holy cow! There's no, I mean, you know, I mean, you you can dream all you want to dream, but I mean, at some point in time, reality says these dudes are really, really good. Um, uh, what's his name? Uh, Major Jones. I mean, that that dude's like hitting his head on the rim trying to block shots. Uh, it, it, Bobby Jones was there. I mean, it, it, it was just it. There they were, and they had just lost. If you remember, they had just lost to Portland for the yes. world, and they should have they should have been world champions. And and so I was there for a few days with those guys. Not very long. I don't know, two or three days or whatever it was, and. And this is this is this is what I love about the NBA. So we're in a locker room. The number one pick, the number two pick, and me. So we're sitting in there, and the trainer opens the door, and he said, "Ewans, like they say in Philly, you know." He said, "Ewans want to know who made it, who didn't make it." And and both those guys are like, "Hey, man, just tell us who made it." And he said, "None of you MFers." 
and he turns and runs out. And, they, and everybody's kind of laughing, you know, because he was a jokester. And right. they, they called him the Fonz because he looked like Henry Winkler, you know, <laughs> on happy days. So they called him the Fonz. And and so they're kind of then, and then these these two guys are like looking around like he ain't coming back. So they're now they go out there running them down the hall trying to find somebody to talk to, like, you know, what's going on here? And uh couldn't find anybody. It was, it was at Ursinus College. And while while they run out, I'm picking up mementos, you know. I'm getting like I'm getting some shorts, you know, top and stuff, so I can I can have a memento for this for when people say, Ah, oh, you really weren't with the Sixers. Yeah, I was. <laughs> look. And then, then the next thing they say, Lowe's, is that ain't gonna fit you now. I didn't say it was gonna fit me. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. But that that that's how we got cut, man. I mean, and 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 uh Everybody thinks, you know, it's, it's, uh, those guys, those guys are really, really, really good. I mean, they're, and I know you played in the league for a while and you know, I mean, those dudes are, they're, they're, they're so athletic. They're, they're so skilled. I mean, I watched Doug Collins. It was like watching someone shoot pool. I mean, he pulled <laughs> off the, he threw it off the backboard. He'd spin it one way, he'd spin it the other way. He, I mean, he just, he was, he was phenomenal at, scoring the ball going at the rim yeah you know you know that's one of the toughest things to uh to share uh with with uh potential student athletes um for them to get serious particularly when you're talking about aau and youth boys and girls clubs and how good you really have to be number one to just get on your high school team and then to be to be good enough for somebody to turn around and said, I, I want to give you a scholarship. You have to really, you have to be really special. And then to be able to get that scholarship and then realize that, I mean, everybody that on there, on that college team with that scholarship has uh, potential and gifts just like you do. You know, everybody. I mean, you know, they're not just giving away scholarships. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then when you leave, when you do well there and you have the opportunity to get drafted, man, the game speeds up the, the physicality, the the mental side of the game, uh, speed and quickness of the game. And it's like you playing you playing chess. You know, people are thinking two and three moves ahead you have to be very special to get that opportunity. And most people don't, they don't know that. Yeah. And you know, Lowe's I watching the playoffs, you know, and you're listening to the announcers and, and uh, I mean, they, they act like, you know, guys are never supposed to miss a three. <laughs> and, and it's amazing how good those guys are and, and how deep they can shoot it from. And it's a shot. It's not a, it's not a wind up throw. And, and they're, they're, I guess you'd call them four men go over and stand in the corner, wait for their guy to run and help. They throw it to them. They shoot it in. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's, it's amazing. Their skill level. Uh, I mean, they awesome athleticism, but their skill level and they don't, you know, the guys that stick around, the great ones can do kind of what they want. The good ones, they got to do what they're good at or they're not going to be around. You know, they're going to they're going to get moved. And and I think that's what happens. A lot of guys get moved because they think they're better than what they are. They try to do things they can't do. And and then pretty soon they get they're they're traded. And that's why you see guys on four, five, six different teams because everybody says, dang, he's got all that athleticism. He can make a three. The problem is he's not satisfied doing that. Yeah. You know? and, uh, Lionel Hollins, a good friend of mine, Lionel, um, you know, he, he was coaching the Nets at that time and he was trying to tell the players on his team, look, if you could just do this, if you could just re uh, guy was about six, eight, six, nine, if you would just do this, rebound the ball, and make the layup when you get the opportunity, you'll have a long career in this in this league. And if he would just do those things, but he wanted to be a starter, right? And he was a long way from being a starter. He wanted to be an all-star, right? But he would have 
he would have been a special player in the league if he just, like you said, <laughs> did what he could do, you know. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, he said it was so hard coaching those kids, those young men, those men at that level about how to stay in the league, you know. It's 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 a lot of the same with us. I mean, you know, you're trying to explain to 19, 20 year olds who have 106 people in their ear that if you can't dribble, don't dribble. You know, if, if you're a catch and shoot guy, be a catch and shoot guy. Cause there had, there's guys that have had long, long careers in the NBA that are catch and shoot guys. Look at the guys that they played off of Michael and those guys end up. Now you see them on highlight films. <laughs> yep. All they did was catch a pass from Michael and shoot. Him. <laughs> That's you right. Know? Yeah. And, but they did what they could do. And, and, you know, it, it's hard to convince guys They they're looking for, they're, they're looking for obviously the, 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 the few that can do a lot of things, but then after that, they're looking to make their team better and their team's going to be better if they can surround those really special guys with guys who can make shots. Hmm. And, yeah, and true. I, I think that's what the bulls did. I mean, cause Michael didn't play with a lot of all-stars now. You know, but he played with a lot of guys who knew their role, played their role, and played it very well. Yeah. But it's hard to it's hard to explain to guys that if you're gonna play in the NBA, you gotta do something great. Yeah. You know, but you but you don't have to do everything great. So stop trying to do everything and just do what you do. And then, you know, people people will notice. Yeah, they will. So real quick, I got a couple of guys to pop on here. There go Dennis. Dennis, what's up, man? How you doing? The pride of Western Pennsylvania. Look at him. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, wait, wait, wait. Where's, I think Junius is here too. Where's Junius at? I'm here, Lowe. What's up, man? Hey, Lowe. Hey, Lou, we were talking about that sermon you gave about, you know, you trying to down uh, drown Dana and me having to punch you in the jaw. <laughs> I tell Lowe's you made a sermon out of that. Listen, every good pastor has great material. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, but Hug, Hug said he didn't know that you were going to be this. He was going to be the sermon, though. He didn't know that. Oh, listen, I got a few more I haven't yet preached yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So I believe that. Hey, Junius, what was the title of the, of the uh, sermon? This morning? The, the one I, about the expansion you in the, in the jaw. Oh, now that one, I can't even remember now. <laughs> Probably has something to do with grace. <laughs> <laughs> Grace and mercy. <laughs> oh, goodness and mercy following me all the days of my silly life back then. <laughs> oh, man. So, uh, so Junius, what were you thinking when you got on that rope? Well, listen, all I know is that I had watched everybody else have such a great time. And I said, you know what? I don't like large bodies of water. I'm a jacuzzi guy. Hot tub showers, <laughs> but I said, you know, I'm gonna give this thing a try. And all I can remember is I just kept going down, and I remember. Froze up. Bad internet. Hey, Junius froze. Yeah, Junius froze up. Yeah, just like in a real game. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna, and, and like, I was gonna ask him when's the last time he listened to Tommy. <laughs> oh man, so <laughs> oh man, <laughs> hey, hopefully he never listen to Tommy again. <laughs> First of all, I wouldn't listen to Tommy. So Dennis, uh, coming into the reunion this year, man. Uh, is there gonna be one? Yeah, we're gonna have one. You gonna have one? Yeah. Yeah. That's I'll be there. Enjoy listening to you guys reminisce. 
Yeah, yeah, appreciate it. I just want you to a lot of things today. I didn't know. Yeah. Hey, hey did you uh, did you record re recruit uh, Clark Kellogg for the Ohio State? I was I was one of them. I remember Gail Callis saying uh, this guy in, in high school named Clark Kellogg can start for the Cleveland Cavaliers today. <laughs> Ohio State probably, just signed them. Probably could have. Yeah, I remember yeah. that very vividly. Probably could have. Yeah. But I, I just I want to pop you guys on, man, for memory's sake. Lou's know. back on. Lou's back on, Lowe's. I see Lou. We had a question, Lou. Lowe's and I had a question. When's the last time you listened to Tommy Roberts? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hey, true story. Somebody asked me just about a day ago where tommy roberts was from and i could not remember i was guessing i said possibly um where was it west mifflin no swissville i believe was it swissville he's swissville. from swissville swissville that's where the remember that's where the uh all the the betting stuff went started all the, the boston college scandal wow it started in swissville I always I thought Tommy might have had something to do with it, but I was <laughs> up there in Monroeville and Swissville just this past week at a conference, and um, wow, well, I, I forgot that was his hometown. Yeah. Did you did you stop in Spatino's? That's where Tommy <laughs> said he used to hang out. <laughs> I was in church the whole week, so I don't even. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, man. So I just wanted to pop you guys on, man, because this is memories, man. You, you know what I'm saying? Uh, this is memories, and we had such great times together, man. So I just um, – just real quickly, uh, in terms of, you know, in a, in a couple of minutes, we're going to do a little salute to uh, – a tribute to Joe. And, uh, I mean, anything you guys uh, – Dennis and, 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 and Lou – Junius, you want to say anything in regards to uh, Joe? Yeah, I was listening to um, talk about great athletes. And you were saying he was pretty good, and Hugs was saying he was he was a really good athlete. Joe was one of the fastest guys on when we ran track. I remember Joe just the speed that guy had, and when we were doing uh, layup lines for the first time, and I saw Joe do a three sixty, I had <laughs> we talked to the double. <laughs> Joe, <laughs> you can do a 360. He's like, Yo, Joe. <laughs> yeah, that's his. That's great his athlete. favorite. Yeah, <laughs> great Joe's great athlete. Sacrificed, uh, you know his game. Joe's a scorer back here, but down the school he was a um, facilitator, primarily the ulos, doing you those lobs, and uh, you know family man. You remember his parents and. Mm -hmm. So that's what I remember most about Joe, just how, how great of an athlete he was and another you know, family guy uh, Joe was. Somebody would do anything for anybody. So we used to well, run yeah, You're absolutely right. I mean, his mom and dad would wait after the games until the last one of us came up out of the locker room to say hello. And that was usually always, I think, me and Lowe's. We were probably the last two <laughs> to come out of the locker room. But I have been blessed to be a part of that family, as you guys have as well. Um, true story, three years ago, uh, his nephew, Ryan uh, Wise, uh, got married in Parkersburg, and he had asked me to officiate the wedding. And this was coming towards the end where his body was really giving him a lot of trouble. And I watched his wife, Linda, pull up to the church. And I watched her help him get out of the car. And I can remember I had back spasms that day. But when I saw him will himself to be there, I just pushed him everywhere he needed to be. And to look out there in the audience that started it and to see him sitting front and center, knowing that he willed his body to be there for his family to be a part of his nephew's wedding, 
to this day, it will be one of my greatest memories of Joe. And certainly we could talk about all of his basketball accolades and all of that, but he was such a great person. I love him. In fact, this coming weekend, I'm going to marry his uh, his niece, uh, Haley Wise, and um, he had, uh, the, the three siblings here in town with the three uh, uh, nieces and nephews here in town. And they've all asked me to marry them. And I do it as a tribute to him. I do it as a tribute to his mom and uh, dad and the love they had for all of us. And it's a great legacy. Lowe's and Dennis and I were there at his uh, uh, funeral and got to be a part of that. I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better teammate. Yeah, so... I want to say thank you guys for coming on. And I want to also say hello on behalf of Coach Amick. Um, I was just talking to Brent, texting. We were texting back and forth. And uh, he's he's watching right now. He's watching the show, uh, Coach Amick is. And uh, he wanted me to tell you guys hello. Hey, Coach. Hello, Coach Amick. So, again, thanks a lot for coming on, man. I appreciate you guys. Thank you. Well, thanks right. for the invitation. Love you, no guys. problem. Yeah. So, um, Hugs, I got one more. Let's see. I think I got one more. And, um, can we pop on? Coming on, man. I appreciate you guys. Take care. Yeah. Look who we got on. And also, we got one more person, too. Yeah. Hey, Where's Deb? Um, where's Sydney at? There goes Sydney. One what? Yeah, one more. And, um, can we pop on? We got a little feedback here. Yeah, look who we got on. And also, look, we got more person, too. Yeah. Got hey, Debbie and Haley on. Look who's go sitting me. What? We got a little playback. Sid, I just want to say you say hello to Hugs, man. It's been a minute. Back here. Yeah. Doc, what happened to your hair? Man, you got it chopped off yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> Hello there, ladies. You got a little playback. Sid, I just want to say you say hello to Hugs, man. It's been a minute. Back yeah. yeah, we're getting a little playback here. What happened to your hair? You guys can't hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. I can hear you good, Doc. Okay, so yeah. We went, went to the barber yesterday, Hugs. <laughs> I called you the day before. I mean, if you saw me yesterday, you would have said, what are you doing with a throw? I, be, I, bet it don't cost, I bet it don't cost as much as it used to, huh, Doc? Uh, yes, yeah, 30, 35 dollars. What are you talking about? <laughs> wow, so uh, so, so Sydney, I, I want apologize, gentlemen, for getting on late. Yeah, I just want to pop you on to say hello, man. Not a problem. I'm, I'm gonna get off. Good, seeing all right, you guys. man. Lows. Enjoy. Yeah. All right, see you at the reunion. Hey doc. hey, doc, come back to the reunion, man. When is it? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know, but you know what? If you quit moving around so much, I'd have an address I could get it to you. <laughs> oh man! Hey, hey, Doc, serious. Drop me a note with your address. I'll get everything to you. All right, I'll do that. Okay. Good seeing you. Take care. All right, see you. man. I'll see you in August, man. Yeah. Um. So Debbie was on there. Debbie and Haley was on. Oh yeah, these guys are back. So, uh, you know, you guys, give me a moment here. I want to do a little tribute to uh, Joe. And um, yeah, let's do it. Okay. Let's show, let, let's show that video here. Hi, Bobby. Hey, Deb. How are you? I'm good. Good. <laughs>
Wow. Yeah. That was beautiful, Lowe's. Well, I think my wife, I can't take any credit for that, <clears throat> um, for putting it all together. I sent the pictures and, um, you know, we wanted to do something special because, Haley, we know you're getting married, right? <laughs> and, uh, yes, you know, yes. and we, you know, we can't, physically be there but we want to be there in spirit and i know that joe joe is there in spirit oh and, i love that thank you so much yeah and uh he uh, you know i know he'd be proud of you definitely thank you so yeah we want to pop you on hugs that was my little brother loves yeah yeah i i'll tell you a quick story um uh, I was at the camp. Bobby invited uh, me down to the uh, to bring Losey, my youngest, my oldest son, down to the basketball camp at in Morgantown. And and so before I got down, I went to uh, Edinburgh, uh, Edinburgh College, Edinburgh Community College in Pennsylvania. I dropped off Isaiah, my my youngest son, who played wheelchair basketball. So we we dropped him off at the camp, and then we went to uh, the West Virginia basketball camp. And on the way back to pick up Isaiah, I called Joe and um, Joe said, let's meet. And I told him I was coming back through Pennsylvania. And then we did, we did meet and we met at a restaurant and, <laughs> and, and I got there kind of early and then Joe got there. And when he got out the car, you know, we both got out of the car because he said on the phone that he was here. He's like, so he got out, got out the car and uh, and I was looking around for Joe and, you know, I didn't know Joe had white hair. I only remember <laughs> Joe. <laughs> I only remember her dark hair. So I'm, I'm looking across the car. I'm looking at this guy who looks like Joe. And I'm, I'm thinking like, uh, he said, Lowe's, how you doing like that? And, he, and then we, I went over and I'm, I'm like, just. <laughs> What's up with the what's up with the hair? What happened? <laughs> <laughs> and um, I remember I had a great time. Um, we had a great time then. And Joe was, you know, everybody who made the comments, Junius, uh, Dennis, beyond basketball, Joe's just awesome, awesome person. And I don't know if you knew that, you know, he used to pick my uh, youngest son up, Isaiah, from from the airport and take him to Edinburgh. And then occasionally him and Linda used to drive up and have lunch with Isaiah while, you know, it's Isaiah's first time away from home as a, a little 18 year old kid in a wheelchair, you know, in, in an unknown place. And, you know, and I thank Joe for that. And then Losey, uh, Losey was doing uh, fences with Denzel Washington. He was Denzel stand in understudy and stand in and, uh, uh, Losey got a chance to come over for dinner many times. He was there for like three months mm -hmm. and he used to go and keep me updated on Joe. It was just, yeah, just a special moment he had with my kids. And then my, my youngest daughter is a college coach at, she's at Fairfield, but she was at um, another school in Lafayette. And, and she used to say, I'm going to need a restaurant. And I was looking for restaurants in Pittsburgh because he had to play against the University of Pittsburgh. I said, oh, call Joe. And of course, uh, of course, Joe uh, found her the restaurants and and attended the games, man. Um, yeah, man. And I, I could be on here all night talking about the times we had. But um, well, he, yeah. he loved both of you and you were his brothers and you're my brothers too. Yes, of course. And this one, <laughs> That was beautiful. Mm -hmm. That was just beautiful. Yes, I I love that. Thank you. Yeah. That makes it special. Very special. Mm -hmm. Well, we you know he's watching over you, uh, you guys, and um, he's there. 
you know, we can't physically see him, but spirit, spiritually he's there, you know, and you, I'm sure like these memories, these things that we talk, we, when we talk about him, we keep him alive. Mm -hmm. You know, well, we talk about him every day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. True. <laughs> oh man. Every day. He was so, he was so special. Like, mm -hmm. He was just a wonderful brother and a wonderful mm -hmm. uncle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just awesome. I don't think I don't think Bobby passed him the ball either when he was. <laughs> well, you know, Maurice and I were out the other day for lunch. And he was talking to me and he said that he got some really good passes from Joey. And I said, well, I was the one that practiced with them. <laughs> and I was the one that gave him the alley-oops and everything. And, and so the reason why you guys got good passes is really because of me. But what happened, Debbie, the, the truth of the matter is <laughs> Joe passed the ball to me because Lowe's and Tony were screwing the game up. <laughs> so so they, Jody figured we put the two white guys in and one of them could make a shot. You know? <laughs> so that's, I mean, that's how all that went down. <laughs> there you uh, go. Oh, man. Hey, hey, Bobby, you know, you know this is live, right? Uh, now, we don't want to get into how you lost the recruit. Right. Which one? <laughs> <laughs> could, have been, could have been quite a few lows. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You know, all, all I could say that, uh, you know, from the day that I arrived on campus at, at West Virginia and and meeting Debbie and, and meeting Bobby as a teammate, man, um, is an awesome, awesome time in my life. Um, time I'll never forget. And Bobby, I thank you for bringing me and the guys back. Um, Cause I think, what, who was the coach before you? Gail. Yeah. No, I think um, the coach from Michigan. Oh, that's right. John Beeline. Beeline was there and yeah. I, I hadn't gone back only other than I visited Junius one time and I hadn't, I hadn't been invited back. And um, Coach Beeline invited me back. That's when I first started uh, coming back. And I remember when you um, took the job at, at West Virginia, you gave me a call and said, man, we're going to have plenty of reunions. <laughs> and I want to say I thank you for that, you know, because it gave me an opportunity to come back and, you know, see all the alumnus before me, um, see all the guys who are currently there. And to see you guys again, to, you know, to see Debbie and, and um, mm -hmm. you know, at the time Joe was coming down, man, that, that was, those were life moments for me. And so I want to say thank you. Well, Bobby, Bobby, you need to tell Lowe's who, who said you were going to be back here. You did. <laughs> Do you remember <laughs> that? Yeah, I know. remember that. When was it? I remember everything you say, Deb. Okay, but, but really, but really, how I said that? Do you I remember? Know you did. Do I, you I remember. That? I don't remember where, but I remember you saying it. Well, I said it to you, and it was at one of those basketball camps. It was camps. at the Rex. It was at the oh, Rex. It was. It's at the Rex Center. Yeah, the Rex Center basketball camp. That's yeah. right. Mm -hmm. Lowe's mm -hmm. was there that day. I knew. I know. But yeah, I, I, I was there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We're so lucky to have you. Yeah. Well, thank you. Awesome. Yeah. And I, Joe was, I, I know you guys know Joe was in a uh, groomsman in my wedding. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're going to be 38 years in August. Uh -huh. I'm going to tell you a funny Joe story. So I, I went up and saw Lowe's or Lowe's. I went up and saw Joe and, and I called Mo and I said, you need to go up with me. And, uh, so we go up, so we're sitting there, and Mo keeps looking over. There was a, a bunch of bottles of booze sitting there. Mo's like looking over to it. And I said that I said, Joe, why do you why did you're not drinking those? Why would you buy those bottles? And Linda, she was in kitchen in the kitchen. She walks in from the kitchen. She said, He doesn't buy it for the liquor, Bobby. He buys it if he likes the bottle and thinks the bottle's pretty. <laughs> That's why he buys it. He just likes to look at the bottle. That's true. That's yeah. true. <laughs> hey. he bought, he, I think he bought um, Mo a bottle of something that he wanted, and he brought it back for him. 
<laughs> Mo <laughs> bought something? Yeah. No. Than that. Yeah. No, no, Mo didn't buy anything. No, no, no. <laughs> Joey bought it for oh, him. Oh, Joe bought it for Mo? No, I believe that. Now, now you know that Mo didn't look at that bottle. <laughs> uh, Mo probably drink that bottle. He, he's not. He's not looking at that bottle. He's not thinking. At, he's not thinking about how cute that bottle is. <laughs> Man, I, you know this is awesome. So Haley's getting married on July the third. Mm-hmm. Awesome, man. Awesome. Yeah. Now, two years ago, is going to be two years, 4th of July, my oldest daughter, Michelle, got married Aww. on 4th of July. Aww. Yeah, on 4th of July. That, that, that was an awesome time. And uh, here we are uh, in June the 18th. Um, you know, it was my grandson's first birthday. And, and she's due again in November. Oh, yeah. wow. That's wonderful. Yeah. And I think you, we, I don't know if you met Sherelle when she was getting her master's at West Virginia. Yes. And yes. she's coaching at uh, Fairfield University now. She's getting married next June. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> yeah. You got a awesome. lot of happy memories to make. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Give, give, give them all to me while I can. Mm-hmm. We get off the air. I need to talk to both of you. I got a daughter who's going to be 40 and one that's going to be 35, and I don't see any husband in sight. <laughs> so if, you, if you two would counsel me uh, <laughs> and to try to help them, that would be terrific. Well, I have a son. I have Chaz. He's, he's still available. Mm-hmm. Well, good. And he's a good guy. Well, yeah. So they're, they're, they're great girls. They just. Uh, they're trying to find somebody like their father and can't find anybody, Debbie. That's what it is. Well, that's true. <laughs> There's no one like you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Haley, so man, what what does this in our last few minutes? We got about three minutes here. Mm-hmm. So what is this? What how you feel? I'm excited, but I'm I'm a little nervous. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, so, so he, I'm, we, I'm very excited though. We don't have to come down there and check up on Aaron, do we? I mean, you two are more than welcome invited to the wedding. If you <laughs> <want to come. laughs> and I mean that you, you really can. So yeah. It was planning it at the beginning because of COVID. So we didn't invite mm-hmm. a lot, but now, so the door is open for you two and yes. you know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We. I think we knew that from the beginning, but uh, yeah. uh, no actually, doubt. Actually, if we wanted to come, we were coming whether you had invited us or not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that that sounds like, been perfectly fine. That sounds like a Bobby Huggins statement. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's how we roll, right, love? That's how we roll. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, actually, I'm going to be in North Carolina with my family. My brother hosts is a. Uh, uh, 4th of July. Both my brothers are now in North Carolina, Fayetteville. Oh, okay. And so I'll get to see both of them oh, uh, when I go down. And my mom will be down there, my sister, everybody will be down there, my wife and family. So yeah, it's going to be an awesome time, but we're going to be thinking about you. Uh, Thank, um, you. Thank you very much. You know, I- yeah. I mean, so talk to me about marriage what, real quick. Just you ready? I think so. Yeah, he's he's a very good guy. He he loves WVU, so, so. that's a that's a that's a flag. That's a that's a, that's a, um, that's a hand thumbs up. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> we've been together for three and a half years, and we have a really great relationship. And he's just the best. So I'm very excited. He reminds me a lot of my uncle. So that's that's what I was looking for, and I'm just excited to marry him and start my life with him. So. That's that's awesome, and then you pick. If he's like Joe, you got the right guy. Mm-hmm. He he treats her very well, and <laughs> he's very kind, and he has a strong Christian faith. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm proud of both of them. I think I think they'll have a nice marriage. I really do. Wish Joe yeah. was here though, but to that's see the her. only thing I wish that he could have met him. But he did. <laughs> he did he's right there so yeah i'm you know he, yeah he's there he's present he's just not physically there but he's present 
You know, and you know that smile, right? And he's probably doing this here. <laughs> That's <laughs> probably. <laughs> so, um, again, Bobby, thank you for for joining me this evening, taking time out your busy schedule. I appreciate oh. it. It's always good talking to you, man. Yeah. And I heard uh, you married a Moor. You're going to be a Moor. I am going to be a Moor. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yep. I will be Haley Moore. Haley Moore. <laughs> woo -hoo, woo -hoo, woo -hoo. I know. <laughs> I know. I'm still getting used to it. I'm not used to it yet. <laughs> no. Well, it'll come easy. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. It's growing on. <laughs> yeah. So thank you, Haley, and thank you, Debbie, for, for getting on. And it, this was my pleasure. It was awesome. My wife and I were just excited to want to do our this. Pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. This means the world. Yeah. I really appreciate it. And uh, I look forward to seeing you guys in Morgantown. Absolutely. Yes. If somebody yeah. will give me tickets, that'd be good. Then I can come. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know, all you have to do is ask. <laughs> Yeah. I'm teasing. I, I tease him a lot. Hey, Deb, I, re I remember going coming out of the Coliseum and everybody was all upset about something. We won. And I'm like, what's going on? That was when you were little and you were running around putting them stickers on everybody's car. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You remember that, Deb? I know. Do you remember the time I made cookies for the team and you guys lost that game and, and nobody wanted the cookies? <laughs> hey, Deb, listen. I forgive, but I never forget. I know. <laughs> I know. So, well, I want to say thank you, guys. This is this was this was great. This was awesome. My wife said congratulations, Haley. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, and uh, all right, it's time to sign off, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for your support of the Blueprint Podcast. We look forward to seeing you again next week on our. Uh, 4th of July special on July the 3rd um, from 7 to 8.30. Uh, next week's guest is Steve Vaccaro of the Chapters Rap. Looking forward to having Steve on. Uh, he's helped me produce this show for the last year. And I want to thank Andy, who's on here now, flipping the pictures and stuff like that. Thank you, Andy. And Anthony. Um, I said Andy, but it's Anthony. Thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Have a blessed holiday and God bless you all. We really hope you enjoyed this episode of Lowe's More, the Blueprint Podcast. Stay connected and follow us at our website, www.lowesmore.com. That's L-O-W-E-S-M-O-O-R-E.com. You can also join the discussion on Twitter at Lowe's Moore, and on Facebook at Lowe's Moore Jr. As always, thank you for pushing your mindset towards a better reality. This concludes the most thought-provoking portion of your day. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this podcast to stay fully up to date with everything we're up to. Until next time, be kind to yourself and each other. The kitchen is a joke, I ain't buying it like I'm broke. Insufficient funds for insignificant drugs.